That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Any historical event, it's really important for us to kind of think about it for a while and hopefully to look at the significance of the event uh, years after it occurred, not just the significance of it at the time. With Apollo, and particularly Apollo 11, it was a response to a young, dynamic president who challenged the nation to do something that most people thought would be impossible. I remember some of my friends who, with whom I worked in NASA when I first got to Houston, Texas, who actually were in Rice University Stadium the day that the president delivered the message, and they said they, they went back down to the, to, to the Johnson Space Center and they said, the president's lost his mind. Uh, we don't know how to do that. And they woke up the next morning and they said, no, what, he, what he's done is he's let us know that he has confidence that we can figure out how to do it. And so they embarked on uh, getting the Apollo program in place and getting humans to the moon as they did. Space exploration, like any type of exploration, is helping humanity carry out its, its innate desire or its innate curiosity about um, you know, what makes things tick? How did we get here? How do we make this planet on which we live better? But every time we learn something from some other body in space, be it an, uh, another planet in our own solar system or something about stars or asteroids or, or other things in the universe, we learn a little bit more about our own home planet and it gives us some ideas about things that we need to be aware of so that we don't end up like places like Mars that used to be like this but now is a cold, desolate planet that um, we think may be able to sustain life but we're not really sure. People uh, sometimes ask me why should we ever care about going anywhere? Why not just be happy on the Earth? And one thing that comes to mind is because it is necessary and we need to figure out how to get out of the earth eventually. Eventually the sun is going to stop shining. Its core is going to be completely converted from hydrogen to helium. And at that point, we won't have an option because the sun at some point, uh, many billions, years, billions of years from now, it's going to become a what's known as a giant star, a red giant. And it's going to engulf the earth at that point. So earth will cease to exist. Even on a shorter time scale, you know, you know, of the order of three billion years or so, three and a half billion years, Andromeda is going to collide with our own galaxy. And although we don't know the details of exactly what will be the consequences of that, uh, that is another uh, potential uh, disaster that uh, the Earth may be affected by. Um, and even on much shorter time scales, uh, asteroid impacts are quite common. And we already know, for example, the 65 million years ago, there was this massive impact that uh, wiped out the dinosaurs. So for any of those reasons, humanity needs to figure out a way to eventually uh, leave this planet. And so I think going to the moon is the very, very first step. Going to Mars is the next step. And we need to take those early steps in order to eventually figure out how to keep our species surviving a long, long time from now. I think as a human race, we need to continue to explore like this. There are always arguments that, no, we're not spending the money in the right way. But if you look at the small amount of the budget that NASA is actually expending to do this and so much more and all of the benefits that are coming from it, uh, we need to keep going. Some of the spin-offs, there's untold lists over the years of the spin-offs from the water pump on the Viking lander that landed on Mars years ago is now an insulin pump so we can take these technology trades and put them to good use for us here on Earth. I used to be a very active scientist in doing a lot of research and when I would go out and talk to the community and the public at large about what I was doing, there was some interest but there was also some disbelief. There are still folks out there that don't believe we went to the moon. And that's sad because today we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the launch where we actually did go and we've got samples out there to show it. It's very important that we educate the next generation of explorers, of scientists, and every manner in between of, of who can support the scientists and the astronauts that may be living and working on the moon or possibly Mars now that we're supposed to be going there. I can remember, I can remember where I was when the first Apollo landing happened. I was nine years old. My dad woke me up and said, son, you got to come out and you got to see them. Got black and white TV, ghostly images, 
but still it was a powerful thing and I knew at that moment when I saw that I wanted to be a scientist, that I wanted to study those, and which I got to do eventually. That really encouraged me to be in science and I think science and engineering, math, those STEM sorts of uh, uh, areas, we need more good people, smart young people involved in that. So the reason I'm here today is I'm hoping that maybe a few of these uh, young children who are coming through here will get excited about that and want to be an engineer or a scientist and then hopefully send missions back to the moon which we're supposed to be going back to in 2024 and to Mars which I'm hearing maybe 2035 will send some people so I'm hoping that maybe one of these young people will eventually go to the moon or go to Mars. There's just so much to discover and so in going into the future astronomy still doesn't have answers to many many questions and uh, we would like to understand, for example, uh, you know, how, uh, what the future of the universe is going to be. Right? Uh, we would like to, we know, we believe that the universe's expansion has been accelerating, but uh, what is the future of that? Or uh, we'd like to understand how close is the nearest life-bearing planet, for example. The beauty of science is questions don't just end the story. They usually lead to answers, but answers, those answers themselves give rise to more questions, and so the story continues. We can think, we can reason, and we can also dream. And I think it's important for us to dream about other places. We've always been explorers. And so to me, this is part of exploration. It's part of getting to know your neighborhood. Just now the neighborhood is expanding more and more. So I think it's important for us to do that. It's important for us as a species to keep looking outside ourselves, keep pushing boundaries. And so that's the important part about this, I think, for me anyway, is that this is just natural to human beings. And if we don't do that, we tend to focus on ourselves and our problems, and we don't actually then do the great things that human beings can do.